Hello, my name is Kyle Chandler, and I'm here today to talk to you guys a little bit about Streptococcus mitis, which is a creature and species that I've chosen for my species presentation for the biology lab class with Professor Hudspeth that's, uh, that's on Tuesdays. All right, so the creature that I chose, uh, Streptococcus mitis, is, uh, is distinctive for one very important reason that I think is, uh, I think is neat and interesting. Uh, this is a bacteria that's found in every human being's mouth. Um, it feeds off of uh, whatever you feed on. So it lives in your mouth, and it's one of the reasons you brush your teeth every morning and evening uh, to make sure that it doesn't grow rampant out of control and leave a film behind, which is what this particular bacteria does. And that film is actually the substrate for, um, for the bacteria that give you cavities. Um, as we discussed in class for a brief period of time. Okay. So what makes Streptococcus mitis so interesting? Uh, one of the things and the reason that I chose it in the first place is because it's actually been into space. So on the Apollo 12 mission in 1969, uh, they took a camera with them, obviously, uh, so that they could take pictures and recordings of, uh, of those guys on the moon. And when they brought the camera back, what they found was that on the camera lens, uh, in spite of the fact that this bacteria or the, the lens in the camera had been out in space for two years consistently with zero radiation shielding, zero oxygen, zero protection of any kind, um, they found that when they returned the camera to Earth, they, uh, they discovered Streptococcus mitis, a little colony of it, on the outside of the camera lens. So NASA did a lot of investigation about this, and they, uh, they actually figured out by video recording of the decontamination techniques uh, on that piece of glass before it was sent that, uh, that the contamination effort was, was not done properly. So it was messed up, and, uh, and somehow a colony managed to survive for all of that time in the vacuum of space, which is very cool and, uh, and very interesting because by all rights, no, no sort of bacteria or organism should be able to live in a vacuum of space under those harsh radiation conditions for that long. Uh, there was a little bit of controversy about it because of the way that the camera was stored for a long time. But uh, NASA eventually, after they did all their research and their probes, uh, decided that there was a, it's overwhelmingly likely that Streptococcus mitis did, in fact, travel uh, unaided through space for all that time. All right, so we've got a few pictures to share with everybody. Let's see if we can make this work. All right. So this is what Streptococcus mitis looks like. So it's formed together into, into long chains, long strands, just like we've seen in, uh, in the lab class for several different types of, of bacteria. So it's a cocky type bacteria, which means that uh, it kind of looks like a, like a pill, like a pill shape. And, uh, and these all chain together into long strands in order to, uh, to be more efficient. So these uh, microbes are facultative anaerobes, which means that they can, um, they can use oxygen in their metabolic processes, and they do when oxygen is available, but as, you know, as it must be since they traveled through space, uh, they also have the capability to provide energy to themselves without using oxygen. Um, and in this case, they use uh, lactation. So that's, that's one of the ways that they, they reproduce and they, they store energy for themselves. Uh, these bacteria are commensal with humans, which means that they live in our mouths, uh, in our, sorry, they live in our oral cavities, and they, uh, they don't harm us. Uh, they, they basically take up space, just like most of the microbes on your skin, in order to prevent uh, worse disease, which is beneficial for us. So they live in a mutually beneficial arrangement with human beings. That's generally what they look like. Okay, where they live. Uh, Streptococcus mitis live, again, in all of our oral cavities, in your throat, in your larynx, and uh, in basically all of the soft tissues in your upper respiratory tract. Um, again, it's commensal with humans, so it uses our food source for its food source in a, a mostly mutually beneficial arrangement, although uh, I think that they get a much better deal out of it than we do. All right, as far as the, um, the Linnaean taxonomy, 
So the kingdom is bacteria, uh, of course. The phylum is firmicutes. The class is bacilli because that's one of the defining characteristics of this particular organism. They do have bacilli that, uh, that vary in shape and length from, from individual to individual within the species. So there's, uh, there's just a lot of variation. Um, and then there's an even higher order of variation when it comes to their, their limbs and digits uh, when it comes to the different species uh, that are closely related to Streptococcus minus. Okay, the order is lactobacillates. Uh, that, that refers to the, uh, the lactation ability for its facultative uh, anaerobe status that we discussed earlier. Uh, the family is Streptococci. The genus is Streptococcus, and then the species specifically, including the specific epithet, is Streptococcus mitis. And this is just a nice picture of a petri dish uh, uh, with a isolation smear showing uh, individual bacterial colonies of Streptococcus mitis. Okay, here is the phylogenetic breakdown for Streptococcus mitis. Uh, the phylogeny is broken up into A and B groups. So Streptococci mitis or Streptococcus mitis bacteria are in the A group, and the distinction between these two groups is one has the ability to partially break down the alpha hemoglobin uh, of its host, and the B group has the complete ability to break down uh, alpha hemoglobin. Um, all of the sort of streptococcus bacteria are pretty closely related. They're not all identical, but they, uh, obviously, but they, <coughs> they all have uh, very, very subtle differences in characteristics, and each one uh, has something unique to offer human beings as far as where it lives, how it uh, metabolizes, and, and where it gets its food source from. Okay, so the life cycle of Streptococcus mitis is pretty typical for uh, a bacteria that reproduces asexually. So these bacteria, much like all Streptococci bacteria, they, they reproduce um, via cell division. So cell division takes place in four main stages. The first main stage is gonna be the replication phase where the genetic material is, uh, is copied and, and sorted and uh, the, the cell basically is, is doing all of its metabolic processes and gathering energy from its environment as fast as it can uh, in order to, to, to grow so that it can uh, eventually divide and become two daughter cells. This phase, how long it lasts really depends on on the amount of energy that it can take from its environment. So it can take, this phase can take anywhere from 10 minutes in a, in a substrate rich environment to, you know, 10,000 years uh, in the case of some bacteria that live, you know, three miles underground. Uh, so there's a lot of variation there based on where it, it's living. Uh, the division phase, um, that's you know the the mechanical phase of, of reproduction where the the all of the materials that have now been copied that are required for the, the two daughter cells to survive both start uh, start moving towards the poles of the of the original cell as the as the original cell elongates to host all of that extra material. So as they start uh, as they start moving the material to the poles, you start to see that uh, that elongation. The interval phase which uh, uh, happens after the actual division takes place. This phase is, uh, is, can be much longer than the, uh, the replication and division phases, sometimes three or four times as long. Um, this is basically the portion where the cell is, uh, is living its life. So this is the cell uh, existing as it's supposed to. Okay. Hello again. So that's my, uh, my species presentation for Streptococcus mitis, the space traveling bacteria. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed it and thanks for watching. I look forward to answering any questions you might have.